the land of the lost sharks. As the apex predators of the sea, sharks have spent over 400 million years maintaining a balance of marine life. And when they disappear, studies have shown entire ecosystems have collapsed. Here, off the southeast coast of South Africa, over a third of the world's shark species converge in large numbers. So finding three different lost species of sharks here is like trying to find a needle in a stack of needles. And these waters are just as lethal as the sharks. The rocky seabed makes for powerful, unpredictable currents, capable of knocking a diver around like a dinner bell. It's these conditions that may have led to these sharks avoiding detection. My first move is to get my team into the water, find a healthy reef, and get a feel for the conditions before we begin a targeted search for our three lost sharks. Two, three, push! But getting into this water takes work. Okay, let's do the other one. On three, ready, one, two, three, push! There are no tourist-friendly marinas here, so we have to drag these rigid hull inflatable boats across the sand. Keep going. We're good. All right, let's grab the trucks. Good. One of the things that makes these adventures what they are is everything's more challenging. Oh, big wave, big wave, hold, hold. Hold it. Oh, oh. We're in, we're in, we're in. All three lost sharks were last seen in these waters, so I'm eager to get a look beneath the surface. We've been trying to find something to give us a dive site. It's taken a while, but as we got out here, whoa, big shark, big shark right there, oceanic white tip. Woo, look at that. Oceanic white tips are known for their signature rounded white tipped fins. They are fiercely aggressive, growing to 13 feet long with a reputation for feeding on shipwreck survivors. And that's literally the very first animal that we've seen out here. Proving our three lost sharks exist will mean capturing the clearest, highest res footage possible. So we've adapted cutting edge detection tech, including low light cams, camera traps, ultraviolets, submersible ROVs, and drones. Not to mention a fearless camera crew. Mitch Long, Mark Romanoff, and Johnny Harrington have had my back for years. That's how we warm up for every dive. We've located a reef they're ideal for sharks since they provide food, shelter, and protection. On three, on three. One, two, three, three. This water is dark, almost more swamp than sea. And the current is already moving us away from the boat. I've instructed the camera team to stay within view, which isn't more than 30 feet or so. And you never know what's lurking just out of sight. Look at these absolutely massive potato pods. Do you think you remember the grouper family and they're heavily, heavily fished? But I come into an area like this where there's these that are completely untouched and unafraid of man, means that we're truly in a wild environment. Whoa, look over there, look over there! Silver tip right here, boys. All of a sudden, this beautiful great fish here shooting through. But a beautiful animal is just not the one we're looking for. He's right behind you, Mark. Silver tips are powerful apex predators that can reach 10 feet long, weighing up to 350 pounds. They're known for boldly pursuing divers and good luck escaping a hunter like this guy. Look out, there's silver tips all around us. 
who senses your heart beating from 300 feet away. Looks like the first silver tip was a scout. Now they're emerging from every angle. In this murky swirl of silver tips, wild currents, and an unpredictable environment, a diver could be lost without a trace. Johnny, if you can hear him, you better come up, man. Let's head up. We're Johnny on the surface. Johnny on the surface. It's just dicey. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, Johnny is okay, but it's a blunt reminder that we're in one of the most challenging dive zones in the world. Dude, it was ripping down there. It was ripping. So we just came up from our first dive, and uh, honestly, it was a bit of a letdown. We had a little bit of a scare where we lost our cameraman, Johnny, for a bit, and it's just because the viz is so bad. But it's not all negative. We found a great reef, and there is life on it, and there are sharks. Now I need to pinpoint the perfect habitat to search for one of our lost sharks. The northern area of the Lost Coast is this wild region where an ocean upwelling mixes with the continental shelf. It's kind of this washing machine of habitats. And in this area, there is a high diversity of species, including lost sharks like the white tip weasel shark. The white tips in the Hemigalidae family are otherwise known as weasel sharks and all weasel sharks prefer shallow coastal waters. The only known specimen of the white tip weasel shark was captured in 1984, right here in Cozy Bay. They're unique from almost any other shark due to the single black tip on the second dorsal fin, while the other fins all have white tips similar to its shark cousins. I'm gonna pepper this entire ocean area with baited cameras. We're gonna make the world's first free-floating brubs. Brubs are baited remote underwater video devices that we are crafting out of PVC pipe with GPS locators. I'm hoping to monitor a variety of depths. Plus, I'm gonna anchor a few brubs on the reef itself. So we found a reef offshore, and it's a high spot that comes up, so this is our best bet to cover all odds. And so here we go. This is the first one going in with our newfangled bruv design. We're deploying more than 30 floater bruvs, and they're already getting some action. Now that all the floater bruvs are deployed, time to dive down and mount the anchor bruvs. The water is dark and murky, but there's just enough light for me to recognize the silver tips rushing in. These silver tips are completely swarming around us. They're in a pack mentality, and they're completely frenzied up. This powerful current is pulling all of us right into them. These little guys aren't going to take your arm but in large numbers, they can start to become a threat. We're surrounded, and with no visuals on the reef yet, we've got to drop deeper and deeper. Something's off. Our diver alarms are ringing like crazy. The bottom is deeper than my dive profile. We've dropped more than 40 feet beyond our target depth. Any deeper, and our mixed air turns toxic. And look who just showed up for dinner. Got big, spicy bull sharks right over there. 